Okay, so I'm back and this is the video on how to do the um, the wooden wood staining mobiles, okay? So what you need, we've already explained in the kit, you have these oil pastels. First thing to do is make sure on both sides of each of your wooden shapes that there is no, there are no stickers, so you can peel them off. Because again, a mobile is something that can spin around and you want to be able to see it from the front and back. So there really is no back. Especially if it's hanging from the ceiling in your from the schach of your sukkah. Then you can go to town. You have eight in your kit. If you're in the junior's kit, you have a mobile, which is three. And um, everybody can decorate however they want. Now, I'm going to start by using my oil pastel. Um, I can do any kind of decoration or design with these. And what's going to happen is because they're wax-based, they will resist the color when I put paint on. Right? The paint will actually stick to everything but where I put my color. So um, you can decorate them however you want. You can write words on them. Okay, and don't forget to do both sides. Okay. And if you have other panda at home, panda are just the, it's the Hebrew for oil pastel. You can do, use them as well. The more colors, the better it turns out. Okay, so there's that. And I could just draw a lot of times just some dots, give a little bit of extra texture, some swirls, some fun. Maybe I want to write shalom, you know, blessings for the year, ahava, whatever you want. And two of the fluorescent. Okay, so I just did two just to give you an idea. Now I'm going to take a uh, dark water, any kind of container, and mix up my brush. Now you get a little brush with your watercolor set, but it's a very basic tiny brush and you might want something to, you know, a little bit uh, more quality brush. So I'm going to take the brush that came from the panel painting kit. And because I have green and gold and pink, I'm going to do some blue. I think a nice blue background would be nice. So I'm going to put some blue here, but I'm going to really rub it very well. And what I need to do is to really wake up my paint. Watercolor paint is very thirsty, right? And so if it's thirsty, it needs lots of water to wake up, but not too much water. If I put too much water, then it's going to be very light in color. So the more I rub it, the darker color it's going to be. Now I'm going to do something interesting here. Now look, as I paint over this, you see how it pushes away where the paint is? It pushes away where the oil pastel is. Even if I go over it a few times, it keeps pushing it away. Now I'm going to clean my brush. Maybe I want to do Hmm, let's do some purple. And again, you can also mix your colors. Remember, I want to give that a good rub for like 5-10 seconds to really wake it up. And to get a lot of nice color on the brush. And there I go. Now this is not purple enough for my taste, so how do I make purple? I add red and blue together. So I'm going to add a little bit of red to make it a bit brighter and see what happens. Now this is a pretty easy cleanup. It's washable, meaning it's just water. And what I can do is take a napkin or paper towel, and what I want to do is sort of blot a little bit to take off my extra if I can't see my paint. There you go. Okay. So let's do a little bit more. On the back, let's do some yellow, okay? Some yellow paint, so let's see. Again, wake up your colors, give it a little booker toe, booker toe, wake up, wake up! And there you go. And you wanna paint both sides of both of the wood. Okay, and if it's not dark enough, so add some color. Go over it again with your watercolors. If you have the homemade arts kit or any of the other, the science of art kit or anything else, you can also use the liquid watercolor, which is nice, which is very, very vibrant. You mix that in just a little bit of water, and that will also give you a very nice, um, strong, rich color, a little bit richer than, than you're gonna find in this kit. Oh, look at that. You can hold it up and watch it run down, watch the colors run together. That is very cool. Your other ones. Now, I'm going to wait for these to dry. Once they've dried, I'll show you how to string them up using the fish wire. And you can put some beads in 
in between. And don't forget to leave a, a big loop at the top so that you can hang it from your sukkah. Okay, so we'll wait a few minutes for that to dry and we'll come right back. Okay, we're back. We have our three three shapes that we've uh, done our oil pastel with and then painted on. And uh, I could do these much more dark, but I really like the kind of pastel and I have different shades of green and I like that idea. So I'm gonna keep that. And then you have your fish wire, which is actually in a different part of your kit. It is very thin, um, very, very strong plastic wire. And you're gonna use this to actually string up your pieces. Now, if you're not good at tying a knot, this is a great chance to ask a grown up for help. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with what we want from the bottom. I like the pomegranate the most, and I think that would be cool to see. So since it's hanging down from the ceiling, I'm gonna start with that. So the bottom of the pomegranate, I mean the bottom, um, just so that it's a little heavy, what I'm gonna do is put some beads on it to add some weight. So I'll pour on my beads. It's probably good at home to do this maybe on a plate so that your beads don't spill, especially if you have little brothers or sisters at home. You're gonna take your fishing wire Okay, and actually, I'm gonna leave the bottom for right now, and I'm gonna do the second, the top of the pomegranate, which is the bottom to the middle one. I'm gonna tie, I'm gonna put my fishing wire in one end. I'm gonna tie a double or even a triple knot because with this stuff, it's kind of slippery. So one, two, three. And there we go. Okay, so there we go. I have that tied and a little bit left on the tail. And now I'm gonna start putting beads on the other end. Then you could do a pattern or you can do whatever. You can don't not do a pattern, it's up to you. I have little beads, big beads. If you have other beads at home, if you have the junior kit, uh, you can use, you have some beads which you can put on your, um, on your other hanger, hanging mobile. All right, so here you go. So you have some fuse beads which are rather large and then you have some little beads. Now you can bead all the way up or you can leave it. Now let's say you want to do some beads but have it look like it's floating in air. So I'm going to leave this so it's clear and then put another knot a little bit further up. So I have a space here where there's no, no beads. You see there's like an empty space and then my beads are going to hang down from here. So I'll put a couple little beads, big beads. Just to give you an idea here. And the beads will stop where your knot is, you see? If you make a knot. So you have a nice um, separation there. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay. Two more little beads, and then I'm gonna make another knot just above the beads, because if I attach my hand, my hamsa, right then it'll fall all the way down. So I have to leave a space. Another way to do it, if you don't wanna tie a knot, if you're not really good at knots, is take, to take the back of the thread and just pull it through the bottom of that bead one more time. And that will hold that. And then you need to do another knot a little bit further up. And you're going to do the bottom, attach the bottom of your next one of the hamsa. Okay, tying a knot so it stays. And again, because it's fishing wire and it's a little bit slippery and kind of it's strong once it's tied, but while you're tying it, it's a little bit tricky. So you want to tie it two or three times. Now, I'm going to go really close. Those of you who don't know how to tie a knot, it's a very good idea to learn. So what you do is you make an X. You cross one over the other. You see how I have an X there? And then I'm going to pull through and loop it around. That's one, okay? After you do it many, many times, you kind of do it without thinking. There we go. So now, if you can look on the table, you see that they're spread far apart, and I have some beads in the middle. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing at the top of the hamsa. I'm gonna attach, if you have extra, you can just cut off the little tail of what you have extra here, okay? 
now I'll do another piece I'll attach from this. 